code is P1129, which says manifold absolute pressure higher than expected. So it's saying that inside the engine, there's a higher amount of pressure being detected. Could be a vacuum leak, could be a stuck burnt valve. It could be the retarded timing. Uh, anything that's causing more air to come into the engine, causing high pressure. So what you wanna first do is you wanna look at the map sensor. You gotta do a visual. The very first thing you do is a visual. So let's go over here. This is the idle air control valve. All this right here. This right here is a TPS, the throttle position sensor. This right here, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of switch for a vacuum line. That's our vacuum line right there, going over here. This right here is what we're after. This is the map sensor. First thing you do is check the map sensor, all right? What we're doing is we're checking the voltage signals from the PCM. Here's the map sensor, and what we have here is we have three safety pins. This is called back probing. We got three safety pins hooked up behind the connector, going into the terminals, touching the sensor, okay, the sensor terminals. This is our ground wire here, white with the green stripe. This is our signal wire, the green one. And this is our reference wire. This is our yellow and red one. On this wire, we need 12 volts. So I'm gonna go from here to the battery positive. And we should have 12 volts on that. Right there, 11.8. That's good because our battery is low. But don't worry about the 12 volts, that's good though. But on a normal battery, you want 12.6. Our battery is low, but no big deal. Now, on this middle one, I'm gonna touch over here and here, and we want 0.5 to two volts, okay? And we are good right there. We got two volts there. So now, on this one, five volt reference. I'm gonna come over here to touch the ground wire and the reference signal wire, and we got five volts. You see the negative sign right there? To the left of the numbers? It means the polarity of the leads are reversed. Okay, so all you do is this, until you, that, the negative's gone. Okay, we got five volts right there, 4.9. That's good, so so far, we got a good signal coming from the PCM. So, all that's good so far. Now let's turn it on and warm it up. What I did is uh, we took out the uh, inlet air temperature sensor right here. We took it out of the housing. That way we don't trigger this coat. What we also did is we uh, we blocked this here. We're not going to get any vacuum there anyway. We hooked up to the vacuum right here. Check this out. This vacuum is going directly to intake manifold vacuum. That What that means is underneath this throttle plate here, that is intake manifold vacuum. All right, and look what we got here. What we got here is 15 inches of mercury. Look at the uh, red area. It says late ignition timing. I don't know if you can read that on there. Let me see if we're gonna zoom in on it. So we're in the red area. That means our timing is retarded, just like I suspected. Okay, so I don't think this map sensor is the issue, but we're gonna check it again right now. Because we already checked it with the car off, all right? Now we're letting the car warm up and we're gonna check the uh, voltage as we move the throttle plate. And as we move the throttle plate like this, we're gonna decrease the vacuum on the inside of the manifold. Just like that. If you watch here. As you open up the throttle, the vacuum decreases. See that right there? Open throttle right here. So immediately the vacuum decreases. So look at that, look how low that is. It's really bad here, so. So as I put my hand over the throttle body, I'm actually increasing the vacuum. See that? I'm let off. Do it again. I can actually cut the car off like this. And the vacuum is created from the downstroke of the intake stroke of the piston. Okay, and that's how you get vacuum in the vehicle. So, but now I'm gonna check the uh, map sensor. Now, we got the car up to operating temperature. 
We're at 270 degrees Fahrenheit. There we go. Fan just came on. So now, here we go. We're testing the map sensor while the car is on at operating temperature. You have the ground wire and the signal wire hooked up. And right now we're at 1.3 volts. Let's go over here. Now look over here. At, oh wait, wait, look at here first. At the vacuum gauge, look at what we got. Still all this at the same time. Oh, you can't. Now look at the vacuum gauge. We're at 15 inches of mercury. Now come over here. At 15 inches of mercury, we need to be at 1.5 volts. One and a half volts. Now look at the, the voltage here on the meter. We're at 1.4, 1.5, well, pretty close to 1.5, that's good enough. As you can hear, the fan just came on, we're at an operating temperature. So only perform this test when the car is warmed up. How do you know when it's warmed up? It's when the fan comes on. So we're at 1.4, let's call that good right there. Now watch the meter. Look at our ranges here. And we're hooked up still. We're on the signal wire and the ground wire. Remember, reference, signal, ground. Now watch, I'm gonna move the throttle. I'm gonna take us up to 20 inches of mercury. And at 20, we need to be at one volt. So here we go. That's pretty good right there. See the less, the more I close the throttle, the more the vacuum will increase. Watch. Close it. It'll increase. Close. Close right here. Close. It increases. When I snap it and close it, it increases all the way up to past 20. Normal operating on engine is 18 to 23 inches of mercury. Okay? We are way low. Look at this. Watch this. As soon as we warm up, Well, we're, we're operating around 15 inches of mercury right now, okay? But now, the computer's trying to compensate for the late timing. It's trying to adjust the timing back to where it needs to be at. But it can't maintain that because we're running way too lean. Okay, how do we know this? See these marks? These three right here, they should be right here in line with these. They should stay there. But they're not. They keep moving. They keep fluctuating. Back and forth. Watch when I snap the throttle. Watch what's going to happen. So we need to figure out why is this car going haywire? See our marks are trying to stay lined up with the pointer here. And stay on time, but we got an issue here. So we got some adjustments to do to this timing belt. Now look at the gauge. We're between 17 and 19 inches of mercury. Now look back here. The computer's trying to maintain everything. It's trying to maintain the stoichiometric 14.7 to 1 air fuel ratio. But it's going haywire because we got an issue in here. And it's trying to keep up with it. Eventually it's going to find it, but it's going to take a little while. So right now we're running rich, we're running lean. We're running rich, we're running lean. And if you look over here, look at the fuel trend. We're negative six. The computer is trying to pull away, hence the name trim, fuel trend. It's trying to pull away fuel from the system, okay, from the fuel injector. Because we're running too rich, then we're running too lean. We're running too rich, then we're running too lean. Off and on. Now let's look at our O2 sensor, upstream O2 sensor. Watch this one. It's going to be haywire. It's supposed to be a normal wave pattern like this. Watch what's gonna happen. We're getting spikes. Okay, and this right here, we're running rich to lean, rich to lean, rich to lean. This is lean down here. One volt was zero volt. Then the higher the voltage, the richer it is. So now let's go down to the downstream motion center. And that's what the surging is. Rich to lean, rich to lean. The computer's trying to compensate. It overcompensates, then it undercompensates. Back and forth, off and on. This should be at eight, this should be at 450 to 800 millivolts. This is after the computer compensated for everything. 
We're running good. This is the downstream O2 sensor. Now we're back lean. It's going lean, then it's going up to where it needs to be at. Okay? Six, seven, eight hundred, even 450 sometimes. The six to eight hundred millivolts is what you're looking for on a downstream O2 sensor. Now let's go to the upstream. Right here. Now let's see if we got the wave pattern. Waiting. So now we're looking for a normal wave pattern. We still have an issue. That's not a normal wave pattern. That should be fluctuating between 200 and 800 millivolts right there, but with a smooth wave. Now what you want to do is you want to disconnect the map sensor. But leave the connector hooked up right here. All right? Leave the pins in there because you're still going to check for voltage. We have the ignition in the on position, and we got it out now. Okay, so now what we have here is a, a vacuum pump. She's going to hook up the vacuum pump to the map sensor. And these right here are the readings that we're going to go off of. Okay, now we have the terminals hooked up to the voltmeter, and we're going to check the voltage as we apply vacuum. Okay, go ahead and take it up to 5. Okay, look at the 5. We need to be at 2.5 volts as soon as she gets it to 5. Okay, what are we at? 2.5 right there at 5 inches of mercury right there. Well, vacuum. Okay, same thing. Now, let's take it up to 10. So she's going to take it up to 10. And we need to be at what? 2.0. Okay, we're at 2.0. All right, 2 volts. That's 2 volts. So now, we start. She's going to take it up to 15. Now, where we need to be at? 1.5 volts. We're at 1.5 volts right there. So now, she's going to take it up to 20. So 20, we need to be at 1 volt. And we are right there, 1 volt. Unfortunately, my vacuum gauge is messed up. And it can't hold that anymore because it's old. But so what? Look at where look where look where we're at. We're good to go right there. We can't take it up to 25 because the seal in here won't hold that vacuum. Okay? But try it anyway. 25 we need to be at half a volt. But can we get it up there? That's the question. Oh, uh, we can't, but no big deal. We're good. So this map sensor is good to go. We have the what was that? It was at 25 real quick. Okay. 25. We need to be at half a volt. Bam, right there. We're good to go. So, there we go right there. That map sensor is good. Sometimes when you get a code, that will not be the problem sometimes. So, you have to learn how to inspect each component if the computer sets that code for that specific sensor. So, don't just go change the sensor because if you change this sensor right here, you're, you're going to have the same exact issue. And that's what you call just throwing parts at the car okay guessing. yeah that's guessing never ever 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 guess you don't have to yeah you will waste a lot of money i did that i did that when i first started mechanics in 1991 guessing and, wasting money. guessing and wasting money i blew a lot of money don't ever do that so that's how you handle that that's how you figure out if you have a bad map sensor all right that's how you test a map sensor right there do not just replace it. Just because you get the code P1129 or P1128, you're going to waste your money like that. That's how you do the test, and it's that simple. You can go get this vacuum gauge, go to your local swap meet, and go find one. I got two of these, but my other one's broke, and I got them both from the swap meet a long time ago. This one's old. All my stuff's old, but they still work. This is an old-school trick that works here's the scale this is for 96 to uh i believe it might work up to uh, 2005 honda civics or maybe a little less than 2005 but this is a 2001 honda civic and this scale right here this range for the uh map sensor this works uh you need a multimeter or voltmeter same thing well you need to get them a meter this is another meter that i have but I prefer to use that one because I like that one the, the most. This is one from Harbor Freight. You can get these free if you look in your Sunday paper, right? Sometimes they have coupons that allow you to get these for free if you buy something. Look for the coupon. But if you don't want to wait, go get this thing for like five bucks, man. Five or six bucks, I think it is. Or maybe even four bucks. But use this to your advantage. Um, vacuum pump. 
another another tool from the swap meter. Anyways, that's how simple it is to test the map sensor. It's that simple. Make sure if you get a meter, make sure you're, you're able to uh, change the leads on the end. With this cheap Harbor Freight one, you're not able to change the leads on the end. But what you can do is you can change the wires. You can change the wiring so that you can take these off like that. All right? Or same thing with this one. That's what we did here. I got the alligator clips on this one. So that's what you want to do. You want to get the right tools for the right job. And you do not want to guess. You do not want to assume. Like I always tell you guys, stay solid, stay strong. For those of you who believe in Christ, for those of you who have faith in God, keep your faith strong. Don't let nothing move you, all right? Keep your head solid, stay strong out there. And in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' mighty, holy name, keep smashing on it. Don't ever give up. Get out there and go get it. Get after it.